I went to the Writers' Workshop at the University of Iowa, um, which can be very competitive. Um, kind of depends on which year you go, but I arrived there and my experience was a little bit like the experience of a chicken McNugget dropped into a tank full of piranha. <laughs> it didn't go all that well. Um, and my confidence was, was, was you know, it, it, um, it can be a rough place. Uh, everybody who gets accepted there has reason to believe that they have some sort of talent and you get there and you realize, well, we all think we're talented. I don't think any of us get to be writers, and so there's a, a big, there's a pile. And Hilma came, was it, I think it was the first semester of my second year. Um, and Hilma saved <coughs> my life. So Hilma read my stuff and spoke to me about it with generosity and discernment. It wasn't, she was never like, oh, this is. Fabulous, but she took it seriously and talked about it seriously. And she taught me the best thing anyone has ever taught me. I still talk to my own students about it. She pulled me aside. Um, this was not meant for the rest of the class, this was just for me. And she said, Michael, when you finish the story, I want you to go through and look at every sentence and give every sentence a grade of either A or B. <laughs> The A's are the winners, the A's are the great beauties, the B's are fine, they're fine. And we're going to assume that there won't be any C's by that point. Um, then I want you to go back and take out all the A's. Because the A's are the show off these sentences. The A's are advertisements for your own work smithery. They draw too much attention for, to themselves. They are the sort of sentence equivalent of some awful child brought in to play the violin for the, for the adults. And they're not in service to the story. They're advertisements for you, not for the world you're trying to, you're trying to invoke. And um, I still do. I actually still do it. I still do it. Well, I actually learned that from an editor. I, uh, I made the mistake when he wanted me to sentence of saying that was my favorite sentence and he said aha kill the little darlings <laughs> gotta get rid of that sentence and uh, he was very he was very sardonic about it he said things like if anybody tells you this book reads it's uh, this book uh, has written itself he said it may have to read itself as well. <laughs> <laughs> But I have to say about Michael, Michael was not your average student. Um, a workshop is sort of a microcosm of the world, and almost everybody in the world would like to write, I think, and everybody in a workshop would like to write, but very few people come in able to write the way Michael did. He was astounding. There were a few people there. Jane Ann Phillips who was not my student, but gave me a story to read that knocked my socks off. I was just plain jealous. One of the stories Michael wrote for the workshop was uh, chosen by the Atlantic at, for oh, yeah. the prize. Yeah. And I still remember talking, but yet we were able to criticize that story. And he was able to listen to criticism, which is the hardest thing to do. Now, you teach as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, maybe. I'd love to talk a little bit about, about teaching writing. Uh, I, it happens more often. I've, I've been in Europe for a while talking about books. It's a, it's a more popular European question. Um, it comes up in among American audience as well. But say, um, say you're in Paris, and inevitably somebody raises a French hand. And says, Surely writing cannot be taught. <laughs> and you know, when I'm in a cranky mood, which is the often I say, you know, you're right. That is so true. Writing cannot be taught. Music cannot be taught, art cannot be taught, which is why everyone is just left to muddle along on their own and figure out the scales by themselves if they want to be pianists or figure out colors by the, you know. What is it about fiction writing 
alone among the major artistic disciplines that seems to require a kind of sui generis approach that is not leveled at any other art form. Um, now, not supposed to just go out unprepared and untutored into the wilderness and sort of come back a few years later with a knuckle in his hands. And I don't believe that. I think we can teach people serious and valuable things. Uh, Wallace Stegner said it best. He said, can writing be taught? Yes, it can be done. It can't be done to everyone. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, yeah. And I think that makes the most sense. Uh, I think the students have to come in with a certain amount of talent that can be developed because what you do as a teacher is point out what's good in a manuscript. That is so helpful. Anyone can point out the cliches, the overriding, what you should cross out. But if you find that one good sentence and show the student who hasn't recognized that this is a good sentence yet. I had one student, a Breloff, who really didn't write anything after that, and the rest of the manuscript was pretty bad, but had a sentence I just really loved. It was about his first sexual experience, and it was, she touched my penis quickly, the way my mother used to test a hot iron. Point that out to the student and say, yeah. this is good. You don't have to say the rest of it is direct. You have to say, this is good. And then, if the student is talented and has that, it's talent and a drive to keep working no matter what anyone Big says. Yeah, yeah. And people in a workshop, it's a very dangerous place to workshop. And you're right about the competition in Iowa. It was fierce. I was totally unschooled and untaught, and I hadn't taught at all before I went to Iowa. It was my first job. And you get jobs in um, teaching on a graduate level without any degrees of your own, your publications become your credentials. And because I had published a few books, I got this job. And I was terrified of these students. And the first question I was asked, actually the first question I was asked was, what is your sign? But the second question was, how do I get a Hollywood, Hollywood agent? And this was pretty shocking and discouraging. And I decided then and there that this classroom was going to be based on honesty and charity, and that everybody who was in there had a right to a fair shake in terms of criticism and attention and a chance to speak up. And that's how, that's how it worked. And yeah, I think the competition yeah. died down. Yeah, no, it's true, it's true. This was the only unlegal workshop. <laughs> yeah, I also think that, um, yeah, you can't give anybody talent. Um, I think that you could occasionally rescue a talent. Um, because I, one of the things I found when I started teaching was I expected students to just start marching into my office and with, with a flourish laying down their 800 page tome and saying, you know, dig this, <laughs> old guy. <laughs> I've hardly ever met that student, and, and the rare occasions that I encounter that kind of confidence are usually terrible. Mm -hmm. Most of the gifted students I've worked with are very talented and unsure and very much aware of how the degree to which this is not Faulkner. Um, and I think you, I don't know if you can actually save somebody, but I, I, I have taken the students, side, not, not unlike the guy with the one good sentence, and said, you can do this, keep doing this, and see where it goes. I mean, I, I think you can, I, you'll never, I'll never know, because you could argue that anyone with talent is going to find their way eventually, but I do feel sometimes like I can talk to somebody who's extremely unsure and all over the place, and tell them, say with this. Yeah, you, they recognize what they do well, and they harness it, and they use it again, and it's it's amazing. And I don't think workshops are a waste of time, even if just a few people rise to the top. Everybody becomes a better reader. Everybody becomes a better, they write better letters to their mother. They, they write better government pamphlets yeah. without all that extra stuff in it. Um, not everyone in a workshop will become a writer. Some of them walk in as writers, like Michael did. And it was my pleasure to teach him. And I have to say that I had a couple of other lucky, for me, 
very good luck to have as students. Jane Smiley was my student oh, for a while. Ephra uh, Loaf and uh, Ethan Kanan. So um, you get a little spoiled, but then you do have to pay attention to the other students. You can't have a teacher's pet. I mean, you can secretly in your heart. You look forward to reading Michael's pages more than you look forward to reading someone else's, but you still do the same amount of reading and the same amount of attention and marking up the pages. Because every word counts. And that was one of the things I heard a less talented student really became upset in the workshop, which wasn't brutal because one law was you never attack the writer. You, you address the work. You never attack the writer. You don't say, you know, uh, you suck. <laughs> you say, this sentence is really bad. Or I, and, But you also have to be able to say, in my first experience in a workshop was with Anatole Boyard at the New School. I was a 35-year-old housewife with two children, and he asked me to read my work in front of the group. I had never done anything like this. I had a terrible feeling of stage fright. And when he was done, he called upon someone to comment. And a man in the first row raised his hand and said, that was the most boring thing I ever heard in my life. <laughs> and I was ready to you know, just shut down and go home and make jello for the rest of my life. <laughs> and, but Anatole slipped me a note, which I still have. He's dead about 21 years now. He'd be 90 something now. Uh, and it said, congratulations, see me late. The story is fine, see me later. And what he said to the guy who criticized me was, you have every right not to like that story, but you're supposed to tell her what you don't like about it, how you would make it better if it was your story. And she doesn't have to take your advice, but she should listen to it. And that was very good advice. And he really taught me, I think, how to teach. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, everybody needs to teach. You did. Not to get too sentimental or anything. No, no. Uh -huh. we do, we get, we've been friends for a long time. Uh, Scrabble players. Oh, she's yeah. formidable Scrabble. Uh, yeah, Peter Scrabble. Favorite <laughs> <laughs>